Hello, hello to everyone on the internet. How are you all doing today? It is the British Rhino here, and in this video, I will be going through some tricks to help you beat Dead Space Chapter 10 in the Bare Bones Impossible Challenge. In this challenge, we are restricted to using only the base plasma cutter and the base suit, so no running to the store to replenish your ammo, health, or stasis, along with ignoring all benches. This challenge might seem like quite the hurdle, but with some practice, along with these tips and tricks, you'll be just fine. So, let's begin, shall we? In this area of the level, after you have gone down the lift, there are two dividers. Instead of lowering your ammo count, ignore them, and instead follow this route to the crew key, then run back to the lift to continue. Utilizing the floor strategy from chapter 1, you should be able to make it out of there without getting ripped in half. If you have only just started watching this series with this part, then I suggest you go back to chapter 1 to see the complete strat. But in a nutshell, looking at the floor actually makes the Necromorphs less prone to attack, but they will eventually get to you, if you are not careful. So move quickly. A quick tip before we get to the next point is, do not, and I repeat, do not enter this room. Why? Because on the other side of this door, there will be a super or advanced slasher, and as we know, super Necromorphs like the slashes can one hit you on impossible mode. You have been warned. Remember my strategy for the chapter 6 video for dealing with the tentacle by using the reload skip? Well, once again, reload skip will skip the animation for the reload. Here's the strategy again though. Just before the tentacle drags you closer to the hole in the wall, quickly reload. And once you have recovered from the drag, you'll have a fresh mag in the cutter as long as you have ammo in your inventory. Be very precise with your shots here, otherwise this strategy won't work and you'll end up with this result. However, it is possible to defeat the tentacle with seconds to spare, but it will be tough. Even I have trouble with this behemoth, so don't worry if you don't get it in the first couple of tries, as this will take a lot of practice. This room can be tackled in a couple of routes. The first one is to grab the nav card, then strafe to the right to avoid the pregnant's attack, then run to the door that will be around the corner. Watch out for a twitcher though as he will pop down to say hello out of a vent. Then run across the room to the door and exit the area and go back to the elevator. The second route is as soon as you have grabbed the nav card, run backwards and go back the way you came. However, there are a couple of disadvantages with this way. It could be faster by a couple of seconds, but you will meet a lot more necromorphs on this route, such as a lurker, a twitcher, a pregnant and a spitter. While the first route you only most likely see only one twitcher or two. Upon returning to the fleshy corridor, you'll be forced to deal with two exploders and some aggressive body parts wanting to use your body as their vessel. Do the strategy from chapter 8, cut off the exploder's arm, grab it with kinesis, then wait for the next to appear, then throw it towards it. If you're lucky, the severed limbs that shamble towards you will get caught in the explosion. If not, do what you can to kill them, as if you leave them in this room, they will appear later in the main area for unknown reasons. Use a power node on this door and there will be ammo on the other side. Once again, Kendra takes a nap in the worst of times. Dr. Mercer has locked your salvation away and you are forced to do battle with the hunter or regenerator again. Do not kill the first slasher or lurker, as if you do, more will spawn in. So just take off a leg from the slasher and do what you can to distance yourself from the hunter. Cut off a leg if needs be and run to the other side of the room, he should begin regenerating. Rinse and repeat until Kendra wakes up and unlocks the door. Like chapter 5, this room is on a timer, not based on necromorph kills. As soon as the hunter drops down, let him come to you, then sever a leg, run to the door and wait on the other side of the bridge or next to the jet engine of the shuttle. Kill the first to which to spawn. If you're lucky, only one will spawn before the hunter gets to you. Get the hunter into position, then sever his leg. Once he starts to regenerate, run to the room quickly as the Twitchum will start to spawn in if he hasn't done so already. Hit the test fire switch and watch the hunter disintegrate before your eyes. 
After you have hit the switch for the shuttle locks, run to the corner next to the door, as a glitch can occur which allows a twitcher to jump into the room with you. Note, you can actually activate the shuttle locks to disengage as Kine walks around the corner and before he asks you to, which has always been kind of weird to me. Go back to the room where you met Kine, and you can now open the door, grab the large med pack. After this, run back to the tram, ignore Dr. Mercer's transformation, job done. I hope this all helps you in beating this chapter with these restrictions and I hope you all enjoyed the video. I'm looking forward to seeing you all again in the next part where we will take on the nightmare that is chapter 11. Have a good one.